ஹலோ 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 யா ஹலோ இன் திஸ் செஷன் லெட் இஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் ரீகன்ஸ்ட்ரக்டிங் தி மார்க்கெட் பவுண்ட்ரீஸ் ஃபார் திஸ் மாடியூல் தி டோட்டல் க்ரெடிட் இஸ் ஒன் ஹவர் தட் இஸ் ஃபார் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் தி சப்ஜெக்ட் அண்ட் தென் பிரெயின் ஸ்டார்மிங் வித் தி இன்ஸ்ட்ரக்டர் புட் டுகெதர் வி கிவ் யூ எ க்ரெடிட் ஆஃப் ஒன் ஹவர் நவ் in order to invent new products we have a, a six path framework is recommended that means we can pursue these paths to get some ideas about innovative products the first path is look across alternative industries generally we look within the industry segments but at the same time here what is recommended is uh, try to look across the industry segments which may point you to some great opportunities then look across strategic groups within the industry so within the say let us take uh, the car industry there may be strategic groups like luxury cars versus economic cars versus sports cars so instead of just focusing on one strategy group or uh, maybe please look at look across uh, the strategy groups so that uh, we may that may lead to pointers to innovative products and services and then look across the chain of buyers now if you want to sell stationery to uh, corporates uh the end user is the executives whereas the decision maker is the purchase department uh similarly doctors if you take medicine uh, the consumption is by the patients but then the influencer is the doctor so look across the the chain of buyers and begin because each person's usp can be different then look across complementary product and service offerings so uh before going to a uh, uh, a supermarket my first concern is the the parking space so even if the supermarket is small if i am sure about getting a parking slot then my priority will be towards that particular supermarket so it can be extended further supermarket car parking babysitters yeah uh, a, a beautician or oh, it's all it can be all complementary so by looking at the complementary product and service offerings that may lead to innovation of new products then look across functional or emotional appeal to buyers some buyers buy for the functionality of the product some buyers uh, buy for the emotional appeal uh, to the buyers so sometimes some products can be you know, it has a close link to your, as to the status symbol whereas the some other uh, decisions are going by the functionality of the product so if you look across this functional and emotional appeal to buyers uh, certain products with the great you know which where the industry focus is only on functionality you can add some emotional appeal to it and similarly products traditionally which were sold using emotional appeal or uh, you can build a more uh, functional appeal to it this may lead to innovation then look across time see the once the time passes there may be uh, industry changes technology changes and you have two choices either be reactive to it or be proactive to it so a proactive approach to the changes across time will lead to uh product or service innovation so it is not one one path among these by by approaching all the six paths uh we, we can invent or extend the current offering uh into the into the blue ocean 
Now let us take a closer look at the path one, uh, that is look across alternative industries. Uh, alternatives include products or services that have different functions and forms, but the same purpose. Uh, see, I may go to a shopping mall, um, may not be to shop, but to have some time uh, alone and do some creative work possible because this this is very particular about me because I get very productive when I'm in a crowded environment without anybody to talk to so I can happily sit and read a book or happily work on uh, an iPad uh, doing the most creative uh, work uh, yeah so uh, people go to a restaurant also for for the same purpose. Maybe they want to they want to have some fun time. They want to have some time, quality time. So the purpose of going to a, a, a shopping mall slash going to a hotel, maybe yes, uh, the objective could be the same, even if it is uh, different industry segments. Uh, here, uh, we should be very clear about the difference between substitutes and alternatives. A substitute, a clean example for that is I can travel from Bangalore to Chennai uh, by bus or a car or a train or a flight. So these are all substitutes for me. Uh, an alternative is slightly different. An alternative is products and services can take different forms and perform different functions but serve the same objective. So example, people go to the restaurants and movies with the same objective of enjoying a night out. The restaurant business is different, this movies business is different, but the, but the, objective, uh, uh, the objective is enjoying a night out. Sometimes I prefer, uh, I, I like to go to hairdressers uh, who, who talks to me nicely uh, especially about the local news and stuff like that. So the the my objective of going to uh, a, a barber shop uh, maybe for hairdressing. <coughs> the real objective could be even networking and socializing a little bit. Uh, so we should be pretty clear about a substitute. Substitute is the, you know, I can, I can travel from Bangalore to Chennai by bus or a car or a train or a flight. And alternatives, products and services can take different forms and perform different functions, but serve the same objective. The main objective of me going to the local hairdresser is maybe talk to him, have some fun. Uh, understand the the local news and trends and then along with that have the haircut uh, done as well uh, so it is it is a the same thing can be achieved uh, by getting into the the local friends group on facebook as well uh, or before uh, we had this it can the same thing can be achieved by getting into a local uh, coffee shop where we interact with the rest of the community. So the industries are different, but my objective is to, if it is socializing, that can be achieved uh, in different forms. So that those are alternatives. Example, people go to restaurants and movies with the same objective of enjoying a night out. Uh, so there's a classical, uh, in, in the book, uh, the blue ocean strategy they've given a classical example of this net jets uh, uh, people i can travel by the commercial uh, commercial flights or i can travel by uh, private jet private jet uh, and uh, my actual objective is to reduce uh, travel time uh, because these two are, it may sound like substitutes, uh, uh, because uh, I can travel by private jet, I can travel by uh, the commercial airline, uh, 
at the same time uh, the, my real objective is uh, is my travel time reduction of travel time so which uh, which led to the invention of uh, fractional jet operations I mean, 15 uh, corporates together they they own uh, one jet and each one will get 50 hours of flying uh, per year uh, and with the with a slightly incremental cost than the commercial and with a drastic cut down on the travel time so so netjets innovated into that space even if it is two different industries the, the chartered operations as the private jets versus commercial jets uh, they when they really looked at the objective uh, the objective is not uh, luxury the objective is not uh, prestige the the real objective of why people preferring a private jet was the travel time and why people were shying away from it was due to the exorbitant costs associated with it and that led led to the concept of uh, fractional jet operations where a group of industries own one jet and the time is shared and expenses are shared uh, which led to invention of a uh, blue ocean where these net jets really flourish there. Uh, the second path is look across strategic groups within industries. Examples could be luxury car segment versus economic car segment, online learning versus classroom learning. In the previous slide, we saw uh, commercial jets versus private jets. So in the luxury car segment, these days we see things like uh, the you now in India at least now every uh, this economy car, uh, the ABS and the dual airbags are becoming a standard now. Before it was uh, offered only in luxury cars. Now these things are give, are given even in the economy car. So they are not just focusing on the on the industry strategic groups. They are looking across the groups uh, so that there is room for uh, innovation or extending the product. Uh, here, the path three is uh, look across the chain of buyers. Uh, so I may buy uh, a phone. I may pay for it, but then maybe for uh, my daughter or son. Uh, so I may look for uh, functionality uh, or uh, my decisions may be rational, whereas maybe their decisions could be you know, emotional. Uh, so here, what we are saying is the purchasers who pay for the product or service may differ from the actual users. In some cases, there are important influences as well. They hold different definitions of value. Uh, mostly the decisions of medicines are taken by uh, the doctors, not by the patients. Uh, so if you want to sell medicines, maybe you are looking at the... Uh, uh, looking. You Traditionally, you were looking at the doctors. Uh, now, a trend is coming somebody has come out with an app where uh, you can go for generic medicine doctor can prescribe a medicine and at the press of a button I get the equivalent generic medicine so maybe the doctor's influence are changing now uh, or reducing and and the patients are getting upper hand here uh, which is a great opportunity for uh, innovation or somebody innovated uh, an application which resulted in this shift in uh, uh, the, 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 in, the, in the power of the influencers to influence that decision. So these kind of things, the redefinition of the traditional power equations may offer uh, opportunities for innovation. It's about challenging an industry's conventional wisdom about which buyer group to target can lead to the discovery of a new blue ocean. One application which helps me to identify an equivalent generic medicine to the prescribed medicine 
uh, that is a that is a revolution uh, suddenly the 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 patient gets more empowered to choose his medicine then part number four uh, look across complementary product and service offerings so few products or services are used in vacuum in most cases other products and services affect their value uh, <laughs> so uh, it was quite interesting on my facebook uh, see uh, we had a, a beauty parlor owner i have a beauty parlor owner as my friend in my local facebook crowd uh, and in my i have two facebook accounts one for the local friends and other for family so in my family okay now there is uh, one person who who's a leading a uh, printer uh, specializing in uh, wedding invitation cards and after some time i i i realized that now these two are uh, these two are friends uh, the local beauty parlor owner is 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 a friend of uh, this uh, invitation card printer uh, and i was the connector so we, even without my knowledge they became friends because uh, it is a collaboration across complementary product and service offerings a wedding card guy a wedding card printer versus a beautician versus a luxury car uh, a business uh, versus uh, uh, the decorators uh, maybe even uh, the uh, the hotels where these functions uh, are arranged the caterers so this can be uh, there is a link across all these complementary product and service offerings and uh, uh, and it has great bearing so the ease of uh, few products and services are used in vacuum so the ease of parking your car influences your decision to go for a movie so if i have a, a valid parking guy uh, then definitely i may go for a movie anytime uh, a theater with a babysitting service, okay, could be excellent. So, uh, looking across complementary product and service offerings opens up uh, opportunities for innovation. Then, look across functional or emotional appeal to buyers. Some industries compete on price and function, they're very rational, and some compete on feelings and emotions. Now, the watch industry was initially it was it was going by especially the economy segment of watches it was going by function only uh, and then suddenly the swatch came in it attached and it was it labeled you know it has an emotional appeal to the youngsters same is the case with fast track in india and definitely uh, the a bullet motorbike in india initially it was uh, uh, a rational thing like the mileage the power and stuff like that now slowly you now it is it is becoming very emotional it is linked to even to the india's uh, tradition and culture and and i i, I came across an article about a temple uh, in north india where this bullet bike is the deity kind of thing uh, so uh, and even if even when you go to that website of the bullet uh, royal enfield uh, it, it, it the positioning is very clear. Uh, they are, it is slowly they are positioning into the emotional segment than the the rational segment uh, of mileage and efficiency and low maintenance. It has it has more to do with emotions now, and it is it is doing pretty well for them. Uh, then uh, the part six. Uh, look across time. How new trends will change value to customers and impact the company's business model. Uh, one example I said is okay, one application which helps me to I, you know, buy generic medicines against a prescribed medicine that may change the value to the customers and impact the company's business model even. And looking across time, from the value a market delivers today to the value it might deliver tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Internet became popular and illegal music was flooding the market 
and there is a time when uh, Apple came out with the iTunes uh, with the uh, high quality music at affordable price and legal copies uh, and they teamed up with the all major uh, music companies and offered this along with the innovation another hardware innovation called iPod so they really they they could forecast or they could foresee uh, the trend and instead of uh, just trying to contain the trend or comply with the trend they redefined it they took a leadership position and led from the front and converted the trend of uh, you know internet couple with uh, piracy into a business opportunity so you have two options either be reactive and the product can be tuned accordingly or we can be very proactive so certain trends are happening over time uh, in the enterprise environment so if you can be can think proactively there that may open up opportunities for innovation <coughs> So uh, we discussed uh, about uh, the six paths. Uh, uh, now to summarize, uh, the red ocean versus blue ocean strategy. In the red ocean, people focus on the rivals within the industry, whereas in the blue ocean, uh, people looks across alternative industries. So focus is not within the industry. You look across alternative industries so that there is room for innovation. Focus in red ocean, people focus on competitive position within the strategic group, whereas in blue oceans, uh, the incentive is for looking across strategy groups within the industry. In the blue ocean, uh, the focus is on better serving the buyer group, whereas in blue in red ocean, whereas in blue ocean redefines the industry buyer group itself. Uh, and in red ocean, the focus is on maximizing the value of the service or product. Uh, whereas in blue ocean looks at looks across complementary product and services uh, so that innovation is possible and the red ocean the focus is on improving the price performance uh, whereas in blue ocean it is about uh, rethinking of the functional emotional orientation of its industry and uh, red ocean is always reactive to external trends Whereas in Blue Ocean, participates in shaping external trends over time. They are pretty proactive uh, there. Uh, uh, whatever queries you have, please enter us command, comments at the bottom of this video. Uh, and for people who have subscribed for this course, uh, can join me for the brainstorm, for the brainstorming session where we'll take uh, one case and then try to brainstorm uh, across these six paths and then uh, try to come out with some ideas for product enhancement or product innovation. To summarize, uh, the six path framework uh, for rethinking or for reconstructing the market boundaries the six thinking uh, framework will help the six path framework will help uh, and the six paths are look across alternative industries look across strategic groups within the industry and look across the chain of buyers and look across complementary product and service offerings and look across functional or emotional appeal to buyers and look across the time. Hope uh, this video triggered uh, some thoughts in your mind and added, and I'm sure that it will add some value to you if you are in the product space. Thank you very much.